Hello, everybody. Welcome to Call It in the Ring. And tonight, I'm joined here with best friend Ryan. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Are you excited to talk about this next episode of Call in the Ring with Clash of the Champions 2019? I mean, the pay-per-view itself was kind of boring, so I'm not, like, too enthused by it, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, good, because that means I'm not the only fucking asshole who feels that this was one of the worst pay-per-views of the year. I wouldn't say one of the worst. It just, I don't know, it just wasn't that exciting overall. It was pretty bad. It was it was pretty bad. Um, I it, Not exciting would be a good one. I almost fell asleep twice. Um, very predictable. Um, from what I had in my picks, but just wow, just an overall like, hey, Paul Heyman and uh, and um, Eric, Eric Bischoff, Bischoff. Are, Eric Bischoff are gonna come in and they're gonna shake things up, and it's gonna be like it was during the Attitude Era. No, it's not. It's not. Well, I mean, if you remember back to the Attitude Era, the wrestling itself wasn't very wasn't world class. It wasn't that great. It was the mo- mostly the storytelling. And, I mean, for the ones that have stories going on, they did push them forward. Um, Just some of them aren't, like, super exciting. Um, I'm going to say a lot of them are not exciting. Like, first of all, before we get into the first match, which was a tag match, what happened to King of the Ring? What happened to Baron Corbin? Yeah, they, so, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I've been looking this up all day, and I can't find it. They advertised that the King of the Ring finals would be at Clash of the Champions, which would make sense because they're fighting over the title of King of the Ring. And so they ran a graphic or something on one of that because I haven't been able to watch. I don't have cable, so I haven't been able to watch the shows live. Um, But I read on uh, the internet that they accidentally ran a graphic saying it was going to be on Monday. Then they made that official, like, yesterday, I think. Sometime, Sometime Sunday, maybe sometime on Saturday. Um, so yeah, it's going to be on Monday. I don't even know if it's going to be the main event. Probably going to bury it in the second hour or something, which is kind of sad. Yeah, Yeah. no, it it just, I mean, what, I I don't know why you have that tournament, design it in such a way, and then have Baron Corbin win, who the fans don't really like. I'm 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 neutral to him. I, I don't like him or I, and I don't dislike him. I don't find him terribly exciting. I also don't think he's that good. Um, and then Chad Gable, whose entire gimmick is people think he's people think that he's short, and he finds a way to overcome his shortness to win matches, which is dumb. Yeah. Um, so I don't know why you why you use that tournament to build up either one of these guys when you have Cedric Alexander you could have done it with or Ricochet you could have done it with or Buddy Murphy you could have done it with. Or Mustafa Ali, but he's injured, right? Is he injured? I have no idea. I, I know. I don't know. He, I haven't seen him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just I don't know. It's kind of a buzzkill. Right? I, I mean look, I really hated Baron Corbin a lot back when he was feuding with Kurt Angle as the general manager of Raw kind of thing. I thought that was a stupid gimmick that he was in. But after his gimmick of Baron Corbin, then we get to the pay-per-view, I I actually really enjoy him. I think he's a good heel. Baron Corbin's not doing anything different than some of the great heels in the Attitude Era did themselves. I don't think he's... Now, he's not a great wrestler or nothing like that, but I think he's a good heel. He is like, oh my God, Baron Corbin, here we go. Like, that's what you want for a heel, right? You want somebody who's always going to find a way to win, no matter what. But I think the I think the main distinction is that he is boring. Like your heel, like Ric Flair, is generally considered the greatest heel of all time, and people despised him, but they liked seeing him. You know, if that makes sense. Like they, it wasn't like, oh, go away. It was like, oh, you bastard, you bastard sort of thing. But like, from the overall feeling I get with Baron Corbin, it's the way I feel about it. I, people don't like hate him because he's good at being a heel. They dislike him because he's boring. They don't like seeing him. Fair, fine, fair enough. Yep. Well, uh, to talk about here, Clash of the Champions real quick. This used to be a WCW pay-per-view. Uh, it was called Night of the Champions before, right? Or was it called Clash? I think it was called Night of Champions. Night of Champions. Thanks, but I didn't watch WCW, so I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, of course, this aired September 15th of 2019 in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Spectrum Center. And our next pay-per-view will be Hell in the Cell. So the first match of the night was Robert Roode. He's still Bobby Roode, in my opinion. And Dolph Ziggler defeating Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. Um, We're not going to talk about the pre-show? I mean, there was two matches on the pre-show. I didn't watch the pre-show because I never watched the pre-show. You didn't watch the pre-show. They had, for some reason, they had AJ Styles wrestling on the pre-show. I saw that in the card when I was getting ready. It was only four minute and 55 second match. So, I mean. That was a good match, too. No, no, we were just going to talk about the main card like we did All last right. month. Last month. Um, now, a little personal thing here to the fans that are listening. Ryan and I are in a WWE Pick'em League um, where, you know, you get points, you know, and stuff like that. It, it's, it's fun. It's just for us to nerd about wrestling. about. And I picked that Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman was going to win because I really thought maybe they would. But as soon as the match started, I looked at my wife and I said, Oh, Dolph and, 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 and Root are going to win because, you know, Seth and Braun are not going to continue this this friendship because they do that to Braun all the time. Didn't he win the tag match, uh, tag titles at WrestleMania with that kid? Yeah. So it's like, uh, I don't think that Robert Root gets the love that he deserves. I think he's really good. I really like Robert Root. No, I think Robert. I think Robert Root would would be like he's kind of older and he doesn't have like a flashy style, so he's not gonna he's not gonna be a, like a main event guy. But I think he would like if they would have kept him in the like the United States title mid card on on one of the brands um, instead of you know transferring from SmackDown to Raw just to you know do nothing. Yeah. Um, I think I think he, like they have a lot of people on their roster, a lot of people. So you could say the same exact thing for Robert Roode that you could say for a lot of other people that he would be a great. Like, he's not. He's obviously not one of the main event guys. He doesn't carry himself. They don't allow him to show anything like that. Um, but as a mid card, uh, like a gatekeeper of the mid card, where he's like one of the you know one of the first people you have to beat to prove yourself. I think he would be really good in that role. I do too because I feel unfortunately that's what Dolph Ziggler falls into as well you know ryan i i love dolph ziggler he just reminds me of hbk so much i mean hell his finishing moves the same thing instead of calling it sweet ching music everybody calls it a super kick but i mean he looks and acts just like hbk and um stupid fantasy ryan uh last night after they won the raw tag titles um i just had like a little glimpse of a daydream fantasy which oh wouldn't it be nice if they did a new thing of a DX in a way with Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. That'd be kind of funny. Well, yeah, I mean, the original the original DX had Rick Roode. You're right, didn't it? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, who, who who's the who's the Triple H in this fantasy scenario? I mean, I mean, like, I mean, no, it was it was going to be Triple H as, it, I mean, Robert Roode was Triple H and Dolph Ziggler uh-huh. was GK. Okay. Uh, but, you know, that was just me. Not a fun match, man. I, I, uh, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't care about it. That's serviceable. Uh, I mean, I I also picked Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman to win. I, it, but honestly, I could have gone either way. I thought they were gonna have my my thinking was that they were gonna have Rollins and Strowman win, so that way, you know, going forward after their after their Universal Title match, things are gonna be you know hazy and tough, and they you know they're how are they gonna work together now and all this stuff. But because uh, I figured they were gonna lose the championship either on the Monday after or the, like the following Monday. Yeah. Um, like this was, you know, this was going to be their one pay-per-view defense and that was going to be that, but you know, they took the titles off them where they go from here. I don't, I don't know. I honestly, I'm not really that interested in the, the raw tag titles. Um, like all the, 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 the other teams, cause they haven't done really anything with the Viking uh, Raiders which are like the, which are like the big team they're supposed to be building up. AOP, uh, another um, monster unit, has been off air for like over a year, I think. And they have but, heavy machinery on SmackDown right now, right? I do believe, but again, it's you, anyone can go anywhere because uh, they don't, they don't, they, they're having a draft. I heard on October 11th on on starting on SmackDown, but I don't think that the like until then any team can go anywhere really. Yeah, and not to shy off our subject, dude, but um, I was doing more research about that last night. After the pay-per-view, I laid in bed, and I was Googling it. 
And so this draft is a really big deal for me. Um, and it's because uh, this is going to happen the first night that SmackDown airs on Fox Sports. And then they're going to do the second tier round or whatever you want to call it on Raw the following day. I mean, well, the, the next Monday. And they made it clear uh, from what I read is that when you get drafted, that's your brand. And there's no every year there's a superstar shakeup. There's no every year there's a draft. You get drafted. That's your brand. That's it. So are they going to go back to like the old, the old drafts or they the old draft? Okay. The, like the very, very first draft when they had Ric Flair and Vince come out and do their thing. That's what they're going to do. I don't, this is probably where Eric Bischoff makes his on screen appearance. I bet. Do, um, do you know if they are including NXT in this draft? Well, here's interesting. NXT is no longer going to be on uh, WWE Network. Only yeah, it's on the USA Network. Yeah, it starts on Wednesday, airing. though. Wednesdays, yeah. yeah. Well, so, I mean, it always premiered Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on the network. On cable. Yeah, it has to be on USA, uh, yeah, USA Network. The two-hour, they're switching it to two hours live to compete all with them, AEW. Um, all, all of them need to be two hours. So I wonder. I wonder if they're going to include NXT in that, so that there's it's like a three brand draft, like they used to do with ECW. I don't know because I don't really want to see Robert Roode or Dolph Ziggler on NXT. You know, NXT has always been, uh, you know, um, and and our area folks uh, from the Toledo area here. You know, they're like the Mudheads, the Toledo Mudheads, the Detroit Tigers. You know, they're they're. They're just there to get you going. So for them to be mixed in with it and have people go up or down just doesn't seem necessary at all. I'll keep well, NXT the way it is. Well, but promoting it as a full-fledged, like, it, it is pretty much its own brand. It, it is a developmental league, but the ones, the people who are the stars of NXT now have been wrestling for a decade or more. So they're not new. They don't need development. They just have to adapt to a specific style. So it's not like what we see in the takeovers and on the weekly shows, for the most part, are not developmental uh, wrestlers. Well, they used to be back with Charlotte and Bailey and Sasha Banks. Those were development, right? Yeah, but wrestling. Yeah, right. Yeah, five years ago, but now it's it's evolved and it's changed. And so promoting it as its own show on on cable live instead of touring around Florida, they have to go all around the country. Um, if that's their plan, I would assume um, it would make sense to treat it as equal brand to the other two and have people go. And, you, know, you could still use it as your developmental territory because I think they did that with ECW near the end of its run. But I mean, switching over, like switching over Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler over to NXT would serve. Like they could be like what I like how I was saying the gatekeepers of the mid card. They could be like the first boss you fight to prove yourself over there because they maybe not Bobby Roode. Bobby, but NXT Bobby Roode was a NXT champion. He was one of the top dogs for a, a little bit of time there. Dolph Ziggler, it may not be like considered a legend, but he has a lengthy career with a lot of um, accolades. So I mean, beating him is no, you know, on paper it's you know it's a pretty good thing to get under your under your under your belt. Speaking of legends, let's talk about the next match with Bailey defeating Charlotte Flair at three minutes and forty five seconds. Bailey comes in as the as the SmackDown Women's Champion. She leaves. What is going on with Charlotte Flair? This is the second time in recent memory where she has been involved in what I call a squash match. This is definitely a squash. This is the shortest match all night. Uh, Charlotte Flair comes out of the gate with the spear. I'm thinking right there, Bailey is done. But no, Bailey is trying to do this heel turn. Uh, how does the match end, by the way? She doesn't do a Bailey to belly. She no. So this is probably the best finish of the entire night. Um, I was watching it, kind of rolling my eyes. Like it makes sense because they've always portrayed Charlotte as the alpha female uh, in the WWE, like physically. She's the most physically imposing female they have on the roster. Um, even more so than how they treated Nia Jax. Um, and Bailey is always presented as the underdog, and now she's a bad guy. She's a heel, so that, yeah, add that with the cowardice uh, that heels always have, and they're want not to fight. Um, it just it makes sense that Charlotte would be dominating Bailey this whole match. That Charlotte just she beat the crap out of Bailey from the beginning until the end. 
Um, but the, the the finish was wonderful because because I didn't even see it because um, sh- uh, so Charlotte backs Bailey into a corner and she's like you know beaten oh, down yes. on her, Go and ahead, the ref yes. the ref separates them and. The theatrics is Charlotte's trying to like get past the ref to get to Bailey while Bailey's like on the ground in the corner trying to catch her breath. And then uh, eventually Charlotte does like a little spin a um, Or spin a Rooney, if you will. Not nah, spin a Rooney. I was trying to, what's the, what's the Madden? She does a spin um, uh, and gets around and Bailey trips her and her head falls into an exposed turnbuckle at the end, at the, on the bottom um turnbuckle and bailey rolls or bailey rolls on top of her gets the pin immediately runs to grab her title and books it to the back without looking back that was fun i really yeah. like that thank you for um, reminding me that was that was a fun ending that was cool. yeah yeah i really enjoyed it. the match itself i was like come on that's okay all right okay charlotte's you know charlotte's gonna beat her and you know bailey you know whatever that's 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 what it is and then they did that and that's pretty fun yeah, they need to do stuff like that because I've always been a Bailey fan. You know, she's a hugger. And uh, my daughter has always loved Bailey because she's three years old. And Bailey's more appealing to her than Becky Lynch is or Charlotte Flair is right now. I mean, because she has the wacky inflatable tube. Riley did the inf- wacky inflatable tube men last night while Bailey came out. She was just put her arms up and she frailed back and forth. It was beautiful. Nice. I mean, like, so it just, I'm curious what they're going to do. They need to bring back some of the other women that I haven't seen in a very long time. I don't know if they're injured. They probably are. But it's like, I've I've begun to find myself liking the women a lot more in my second run of watching WWE, Brian. It's just, I feel the women have better storylines. And I miss myself some Nia Jax. I really wish she would come back. I really miss Mina. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tamina, right? Yeah, Tamina. Tamina, really miss her because she's Jimmy Suka, uh, Suka's daughter or niece. Snuka. Snuka, isn't isn't she daughter? Da- daughter. Yeah. And yep. uh, regardless of how people feel about it, I thought it was a great presence to be around the women. I I I miss myself some uh, some uh, Ruby Riot. I miss myself some uh, Sarah Logan, Liv Morgan, and also uh, oh my god. The baddest woman on the planet. Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Use your words. You can do can't, this. Can't see it. I mean, those are a lot of great women that I miss. And I feel that the women's uh, division is kind of lacking some some extra talent here. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I, I'm going to contradict you on like, the storylines. The, their, their title feuds, um, they tend to like flip-flop where one is good and one's not. One's interesting, one's not. Um to where, like, I mean, going going through to SummerSlam, Bailey versus Ember Moon was not very interesting, no. but Becky versus Natalia was, even though, you know, Natalia w- was a good guy. Becky's a tweener, um, and then you have Ember Moon and Bailey, who are both good guys, both faces. So, like, even a face versus face is never is inherently not that interesting because there's nothing to overcome. It's just friendly competition. Um, but they found a way to make the Becky and Natalia match interesting without actually making someone the bad guy. Yeah. No, I, I agree because some of my favorite matches last year that I watched was, I think it was at Evolution where he had a great uh, uh, ladder match or was it a TLC match with uh, Becky and Charlotte. That match was the match of the year for me. Like, I, I don't know why women, these women are just so great. And my wife, and then we'll move to the next match, is like, oh, you just like because they're hot and they wear skimpy clothing. I was like, actually, honey, if you want to see these women wear skimpy clothing, I'll show you the Attitude Era. Women came out, was it Sable came out with just hands taped to her breast? Mm, back when they used to have bikini contests and pillow fights and uh, evening yeah. gown matches, yeah. Exactly. I mean, like, I'm happy because of these reasons. This is my case, and I'm done. One. Me like in wrestling, this is a great for my daughter because she's seeing strong women that are not being scantily clad and they're doing great things athletically as well. Um, and I just really am into them more because the guys just kind of seem more of a been there, done that. And I'm just interested to see what they do with the women more, you know, because I feel that they have a lot more talent. The women have more talent, I feel. That's just my personal opinion. 
I wouldn't so, necessarily necessarily say they have more talent. I think they're just as talented. And we're just now like it's you know in the past five years or so they're like that they're being able to show it instead of you know having to be drop dead gorgeous and know how to do it like a you know an arm drag. I guess because I like it because it's new. We're yeah. Growing up, you know. So. Yeah, I'm uh, not. I, I wouldn't say the women. Like, I wouldn't say the women are more talented. I think it's just because we're we're just now over the past couple of years getting to experience the fact that they are talented. Okay, I agree with you on that one. Then, yeah, I will. I will retract my statement on that one. I guess it's just new and exciting. I'm just really into it. The next match, you're not going to hear me talk about this match at all. You got the revival, Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder defeating the New Day, Big Games, Amber Woods by submission. Uh, the New Day lost their SmackDown tag titles again. They're the six-time tag champions. Match lasted for 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Is it just me, or am I the only prick out there that's over the New Day and over Kofi Kingston? I- I'm just, I'm just over it. Um, I'm over the pancakes. I'm over the bootios. I'm also over the revival. Who the hell are these guys? Was it wasn't the ball guy? Didn't he used to come out with like a weird nineteen, like a no, like nineteen, but like but like but like that weird handlebar mustache? What happened to that guy? That's not like, the same person. Um, the revival? Oh, I guess he did have a handlebar mustache. I thought you were talking he about did. the vaude villains for a second. No. Um, I don't like this match. I, I it was bored. I was. Oh, bored I love it. I love this match. This match was great. This was a tag team match. It was wonderful. Um, you have the Revival, who are the Despicable Heels, and the New Day, who are the uh, plucky faces. They, they, you know, when, biz- when business needs to get done, they do business. Otherwise, they're having fun. Um, but, like, it was the Revival won because they were a tag team. It was nice. The ending was great, especially, like, when they just, like, they could have pinned and won the titles very easily on Xavier Woods. But then, no. Now, he had an injured knee, and they are going to injure it further. Hence the stopping and the submission, because the revival they don't like their finisher is not a submission. It's a the shatter machine, which is like where, I think Scott Dawson lifts them in the air and they yeah. get like a code breaker from Dash Wilder. Really, I see. I I can't stand the revival. I am begging. I am foaming at the mouth to get great tag teams like we had back in the day, and that's not nostalgia. Is the revival as good as New Age Outlaws? I would like to say no. I would think, is- if given the opportunity, I'm sorry, I just hit my mic there. If given the opportunity, I think they could very well show. I, I mean, I don't know exactly because, like I said, I don't watch the live program, so I don't know exactly how good they are on the mic. Um, but from an in-ring standpoint, there, I think they're far superior. I think if given the opportunity to show, like, showcase, uh, like if they have charisma, um, I think they would. I think they could very easily. Rival or equal um, your high bar of the New Age Outlaws. I would argue that not a single tag team we'll move to the next match is as good as these tag teams. Again, not nostalgia, just looking at them. Not a single tag team now, which is barely anybody because there's not a lot of teams, are not as good as the Hardy Boys, the Dudley Boys, APA, Edge and fucking Christian, and uh, also, like I said, New Age Outlaws. Not a single one of these tag teams can hold a candle to to those classics. Not a single Here, one. Here's the thing I think is the difference between that grouping and, and people now. The the Attitude Era, everyone had a thing. Everyone had a gimmick, right? And it was very distinguished. It was very identifiable. It was different from this person. You know, you had the headbangers. You had Legion of Doom. The APA were bar brawlers. The, I mean, they were the acolytes, but then they were bar brawlers. Party boys, uh, they were high flyers. Um, Dully boys, they like you know to break things. Edge and Christian, they were you know they cheated. That was their thing. Everyone had a thing. Um, nowadays, what what are people's things? The New Day had the pancakes. The Revival, they're old school. What? Give me, give me another. Like the Viking Raiders, they they have Viking markings on them, but like what? What else? That's it. And Heavy Machinery does the worm at the end. I yeah. mean, it's 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 tacky. It's not good. Um, I watched. Well, a- I'm saying my arguing, my argue, my my point is that you hearken back to that attitude era because everyone had something that's identifiable that you could remember. You can't really remember anything about the new crop because they don't really 
give them anything to show. I would argue, and this is the end of my point, that not a single one of these tag teams can ever, ever do a triple threat tag match at a WrestleMania kind of event and a TLC and pull it off twice like those three teams did of the Hardy Boys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. I will fight you tooth and nail that. These teams are not that enjoyable to watch. I believe it was, I think there's an NXT takeover. I don't remember which one it is, but it is um, a triple threat match between um, the Revival, Authors of Pain, and DIY. And I do believe it's a ladder match. And that, sir, is a very good match. Well, you know what? I'm talking about WWE, not NXT. So, lawyered. Uh, I mean, it's under the same brand, like under the I, same company. I don't I know. know. Damn it. All right, next match is my girl, Little Miss Bliss, and my girl as well, Nikki Cross, defeating Mandy Rose and Sony Deville for the Raw Women's Tag Team Championship. Um, it lasted nine minutes and five seconds. I do not like Mandy Rose and Sony Deville. Sony Deville comes out supporting her gay pride bandana, letting everybody know, yes, I am a lesbian. I'm here. Get used to it. Nikki, uh, Nikki Cross, one of my favorites, and Alexa Bliss coming out as a Harley Quinn do. Just great. That's weird. Why did you feel the need to, like, say Sonya Deville? Like, she's just simply wearing a, a, a rag down her leg that has the gay pride flag on it, and you're you're acting like she's, like, throwing it in your face, saying, I'm I'm a lesbian. That's, you know, you need to be okay with that. No, I don't know, it's no, just weird the way you presented it. I guess if I presented it badly, I... I, I totally apologize um no um she's out on the internet or something like i read an article or something that no she's, she's she, yeah she's she's in yeah, she is an yeah. out she is gay yeah, yeah. yeah she's out yeah. She's, you know, she's gay she's lesbian um and but what did that have to do with the match that's what i'm just curious about well if you would let me finish <laughs> what i was training it i just i just found it good for her kind of a thing uh because her character is is so um Kind of. Why can I not remember her name? The baddest woman on the planet. Shit. Ronda Rousey. Thank you. You'll her get character. It. Her uh, Sonya Deville is kind of like a poor man's Ronda Rousey character in a way. You know, kind of like that. Kind of like that fighting kind of style. You know, I don't know if Sonya Deville used to be in UFC or anything, but you know, she kind of just reminds me of that. Kind of like a poor man's version. So to have her character, which I believe she could kick my ass. Uh, coming out, uh, supporting the gay pride uh, bandana flag on, on the back of her trunks there. I thought that was pretty cool that she did something new to her, you know, new, you know, and I thought it was interesting to let people know, you know, I'm gay if you don't know kind of thing. I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was cool that she did it. Uh, I guess I just didn't present it well. Okay. Yeah, I had no problem with it at all. I, it, it was just, yeah, it was just cool. Uh, but nobody's going to beat Alexa Bliss and uh, Nick Cross here. These are my girls right now. So, Yeah, the thing is, like, this match wasn't terribly interesting. It, it, it is what it is. I think that they should split up Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose because I think that they're yeah. worse together than they would be apart. Um, I, I think if they wanted to, I think Sonya Deville could be a star. I honestly do. Uh, like, Mandy Rose, <laughs> she's hot, but she doesn't really have, like, that much of in-ring ability. Hot? Mandy she... Rose? She's... No. she's I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of her face, but she's got the body and the blonde hair, and that's pretty much what they what the WWE says is a hot woman. And I so, guess. Nikki, Alexa Bliss, Mandy Rose, Charlotte Flair. If you go down the line, Trish Stratus, Sable, the Cat. It's always blonde with a nice body. That's All what right. they consider hot. Um, but like, Sorry. I don't like. She's got that sweet running knee, like the knee, like the knee kick. I don't, like it looks kind of like a. Seamus' finisher, but she doesn't, like, kick him in the face. She sits him with her knee. Sure. Um, but Sonya Deville, like, she... I think if they gave her the opportunity, I think she'd be really good. If they ever do give her an opportunity, because I agree with you. I've always liked Sonya Deville, but Mandy Rose changed her character, right? Because she wasn't always this blonde, bombshell kind of character, right? Like, she was... She was something else before. Not, in, not on, not on the main roster in NXT. She might have, but I didn't, I didn't know of her in NXT because like I didn't, I don't watch a whole lot of NXT. Um, the first time I was introduced to her was when her and Sonya Deville came up when Paige came back when they were Absolution, Absolution, Absolution. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so this was, match was okay. I, I, it wasn't it was good or bad. Yeah, it was all right. It was, fun. it was fun. I 
really enjoy seeing Alexa Bliss back. She's always fun. She's always a good heel for the women. You know, she's that, uh, you know, she's that Ric Flair to a certain degree because I think the difference between her and Charlotte Flair is that Ric Flair is always the slimy sleaze bag kind of guy who always gets what he wants kind of heel, you know. And I feel that's more of Alexa Bliss, you know, because Alexa Bliss is a user. That's her character, you know. She always gets what she wants, and she's always fun for me uh, to watch. Yeah, I think they're sharing her face, though. I think this whole thing with Nikki Cross is going to end up with her being, like, when they when they do end up splitting up, I think Nikki Cross is going to be the one who betrays Alexa. Oh, well, of, of course, because they got to redeem what happened at WrestleMania when you Nia Jackson, Alexa Bliss were friends, right? And, you know, she called uh, Nia Jackson a fat cow or something. At, you know, what, anyway, uh, the next match is a match that I thought that I would care about, a match that I was interested in at the time before, but this was the match that I had not a lot of interest in. Shinsuke Nakamura with Sami Zayn defeating The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Match lasts nine minutes and 35 seconds. Um... I'm just going to say this. You're going to say I'm an asshole. That's fine. Boo, Shinsuke, boo. I oh, that's fine. Saying. Oh, that's totally fine. I think that his, I think he's regressed a lot. He was super popular about a year and a half ago. Well, I mean, to the, like 2017, 2018. Uh, yes. until, he, like, until he kept losing to AJ Styles and they put him, like they pushed him really far down the card and he was kind of, he kind of disappeared. Um, I, I, I'm, he's kind of like, I don't know, when he really wants to be entertaining, and, and really good in the ring and put on a, a great match, he can. Uh, I think that's made like pretty obvious he can still do that. I just think he just doesn't care that much anymore because he's not in the main title picture. So he's just he's just there because he has to be. But, you know, he's kind of just going through the motions. I do like the pairing with Sami Zayn um, just because the, the shtick Sami Zayn does where he's um, shit-talking at the beginning of the match over the microphone. I think that's pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, this match was... It was kind of boring. It was one of the ones I was, I kind of tuned out on. I think like Shinsuke Nakamura, if like he was really popular, like back in you know 2017, beginning of 2018, like he won the Royal Rumble. He you know had the big match at, at WrestleMania against AJ Styles, but like he kept losing, he kept losing, and like his heel turn didn't really work out. Um, and then afterwards, they just pushed him down to the card and kind of disappeared for a while. So I think fans have kind of lost the enthusiasm for it because they, they kind of realize that he's never going to be one of the top guys and all that. And I feel like he, since he's not in the main picture, he just doesn't care that much. Cause if he wanted to, he could put on a, a an electrifying, like, really good match. I believe that I've seen it. Uh, we've seen it in, in past shows. I just think that he's kind of there, you know, he's just kind of there to, to collect his, collect his paycheck and, and, you know, do what he's supposed to. Without really killing himself. Well, um, my but... opinion. Of... Sorry, no. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, my opinion about that, Ryan, is I'm going to piggyback off of you. I think the reason why he acts this way is because he's pissed off of what Vince McMahon told him to do. Like, hey, that's really great, Shinsuke, that people like you. So we're going to have you hit uh, AJ Styles at rest at, at WrestleMania in the nuts and make you a bad guy. I know people love you, but we're going to make you a bad guy. And I think Shinsuke was just like. All right, give me a paycheck, whatever. Like, I'm not going to fight you, dude. I mean, I'm not going to get in his head and, and, and try to figure out what he was thinking. Um, but I, w- I would say that I don't think it was that moment where he was like, whatever. I think it was the follow-up. Because he got a heel turn at WrestleMania in, like, one of the marquee matchups. So, like, that that of itself is, is pretty pretty big that's pretty cool it changes character on a grand stage where you have the most viewers you're gonna get all year um it's just the follow-up was bad it was bad well i mean aj styles title run was bad you had him going against shinsuke for a few months and after that was over with he did samoa joe and just ugh, you left out the you left out where he had that one month feud with rusev he did and I know you love Rusev, and I loved that you loved Rusev, especially we went to SmackDown, and we were both cheering for Rusev. And, and he won. Nobody gives a fuck, and nobody gives a fuck about Rusev anymore. It's like yeah, that. he disappeared. It's very sad. They all do. Uh, let's talk about a match that I really enjoyed. 
I enjoyed the match. I want my words to be heard carefully there. Sasha Banks uh, defeated Becky Lynch in a disqualification, but Becky Lynch still wins, still retains her Raw Women's Championship at 20 minutes even. This, this match, I feel, was almost as good as the ladder match between Becky Lynch and Charlotte at uh, at uh, Evolution. Um, I'm sick of Becky now. What do you think? And are you sick of Becky because Sasha's so good, or what do you, why are you now sick of Becky? I like that. Okay, so back in the day when I watched WCW, what made WCW always suck was you had all the titles, but they had titles, you know, like TV champion, and, you know, shit titles. You know, they had the United States Championship. But like Hulk Hogan was always the world heavyweight champion of the big gold belt, right? Nobody was ever the champion for the for a long time. And then all the other titles kept on switching hands every week on Nitro. You know what I mean? It's kept on switching all the week. It made the titles less um, intriguing and less desirable, you're right, to a fan's kind of point of view. So I'm looking at Kofi. I'm looking at Becky. Both have won their titles since WrestleMania. We already went through SummerSlam. It's time for one of them to lose the title. And I'm afraid that both of these, Kofi and Becky, are just so popular. Or maybe they're losing their popular. I don't know. But they just seem like they're just so in my face that they're becoming another Brock Lesnar where nobody else is going to get that title. And I'm just kind of just like over it. Like I want Becky to fight for something again and she has something to fight for. I think Sasha Banks does. And Sasha Banks was great in this match. What do you feel about this match? I really like this match. I, I I wouldn't put like, you know, say it's like match of the year, like you're comparing it to la- like what you thought was last year's match of the year. It was it was a good match. Uh, I was entertained. Um, I I've never been a fan of Sasha Banks, um, but I've only ever known her as a good guy. Uh, but heel Sasha Banks is really fun, and I really like her. And I was kind of frustrated when um she didn't win the match when she used the um distraction like she grabbed the one chair threw it in the ring so the ref would have to turn around pick it up then grab the other chair then hit becky lynch with it and then ran inside and did a shining wizard where she kicked her like in the face with her her shin and then didn't win that should have been that should have been the end of the match jordan sasha banks should be your raw women's champion however they continued Becky Lynch ended up getting the disqualification because she hit the ref with the chair. Then they had this extended brawl around the arena, which was fun. Um, Cause I, you don't really see a whole lot of those. I haven't really seen a whole lot of those since I started watching a couple, uh, again, a couple years ago, but I do remember that was like a staple of the attitude era. Um, with a lot of brawls through the crowd and um, yeah, like I, no, I'm not going to say this was my match of the night, but it was it was it was probably one of the better ones. I'm like it's 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 definitely not my match of the night. I just I just really liked this these two and what I hope they don't do, which I feel that they will though, is because they're going to do whatever Vince says. Is this is going to continue because I don't think Natalia and Becky had a really great storyline. I think Sasha Banks has a great storyline going with Becky. And I feel they need to go at each other again at Hell in the Cell, in Hell in the Cell. That would be really cool. And end the rivalry at that. Don't do the next four months of Sasha and Becky because that's where I get frustrated and irritated. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I think I just, the match should have ended with Sasha Bank. Well, I, like, I thought Becky was going to win. I thought it was going to be bullshit. And I thought that's what we're we're just gonna go about our time. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly happy with Becky Lynch being women's champion. I'm not over Becky Lynch by any stretch of the imagination. I do think Sasha Banks should have won the won the title, um, just because like her whole thing is she came back, and you know you can't have her lose her first match back. Um, and she and if she wins by like her the trickery she had there that only deepens her heel character, and she takes the title from Becky Lynch. So now it deepens that storyline gets the fans behind becky even more fans despising sasha banks even more and then you could have your your big blow off inside hell in a cell at hell in a cell and it, it could be like this you know this brawl you could have the women brawling and you don't really get that a whole lot but 
Yeah. I'm not a fan of how it ended. Not a fan with how it ended. Did you watch the Sasha Banks documentary after Clash of Champions 2? No, I, I had to watch Clash of Champions um, the morning after because I had to work. Okay. Well, during... um, she left because she was depressed in her real life. She said that after she lost the title at WrestleMania, she was done. She left and she wanted to find herself and be happy again. She kind of did the whole HBK, I lost my smile routine. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, is Chronicle so I've been I've been trying to figure this out. Is Chronicle kayfabe or is that like real or is it like a mixture of the two? I think it's a mixture of the two. Okay. Because you know Sasha Banks was crying on camera and these wrestlers are anything but good actors. I mean like I mean they're good actors in their element, but actually crying on cue, I don't know. You know, I mean, she said she was depressed. She said she wasn't happy doing it anymore. I believed her in that. I feel it's because Miss McMahon said to her and Bailey, you guys are going to lose the uh, lose the women's tag championship to the Iconics at WrestleMania. And she probably just said, that's fucking stupid. I'm not agreeing with this and I'm going to walk away because she said in the documentary that she decided that she was going to walk away after Mania. That's what I think happened. Because Bailey automatically got a push after Mania. Yeah, I think I think she got a push just to spite Sasha. That's all honesty. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just, I, just, I mean, now the Iconics are not even around anymore. So nope, I think they're on main event. I think they wrestle on main event now. Exactly. They're they're stupid. That was a bad choice. Don't have, don't have a brand new title for women. The women's tag championship. I don't have these girls. Who are arguably two of the most two of the most popular girl, female wrestlers they have, and have them lose to the Iconics at Mania. That's just stupid. And Sasha hinted at that a lot, so I think it was kayfabe. I think it was reality. But you know, she did the whole HBK I lost my smile bit. So okay. that's what I think. You know, it went away. Uh, next match was Kofi Kingston defeating Randy Orton for the WWE Championship at 20 minutes and 50 seconds. This is the longest match by 50 seconds of the night. Um, I've always been a Randy Orton fan. Um, I remember Randy Orton back in the day. I watch wrestling when he came around, but I didn't know of him. Um, there's a great documentary about him on the WWE Network about how he was in pretty much military prison because he ran away and all this kind of stuff about him and made me like him more as a, as an individual. So I've always kind of liked Randy Orton and this goes with Becky Lynch. I am over Kofi Kingston. I don't think Kofi Kingston is a good champion and I wanted Randy Orton to win for the 16th time. I was, I am done with Kofi, but Randy Orton does the same thing, Ryan. And it's so annoying. You know, it's it's sometimes this happened in the Attitude Era, buddy. It's the end of the match. You know, Randy Orton does his little coil like a snake routine. He gets ready to hit the RKO, and he always gets foiled at the end, but the RKO comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, God, I'm sick of that. I, I How about this? I like Randy Orton, but I'm sick of these two. How about that? Okay. See, I've never been a fan of Randy Orton. Um but like I'm starting to come around to him because like I, th- I think how they were using him since I started watching again, where he's he's not prominent, but he's he is kind of sort of prominent. Like he's not in he doesn't always have a storyline, but he's always involved somehow. And yeah. so like like these small doses of Randy Orton, I, I've I've kind of come around to him, and I, I like I'm not necessarily saying like oh I like his character, but I, I like him more now than I did when I was watching when I was younger. I'm not over Kofi Kingston by any stretch of the imagination. I'm still super happy uh, that they actually gave him a run with the title. Um, I do think that Randy Orton should have won here and 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 had the title because I think like that. I think that would have um, you could have another match with this this rivalry and it would give it would give Kofi and uh, like he had the big marquee match to win the title and start this reign at WrestleMania. Um, and if you have him beat Randy Orton to take the title back. Like, I understand because the whole 
the whole storyline is they're they're fighting a rivalry that started 10 years ago um where randy orton's been saying like oh kofi's not ready for the spotlight and all this stuff and if you have randy orton win then you're only making kofi look bad because the guy who says he's not ready for the spotlight was right and you can't have your champion not be ready for the spotlight so you know it's kind of a you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't but i think i i but again i don't write for the wwe but i think you know fantasy wise i think if we gave if you had randy orton win here it would give kofi another big big um sort of rally especially since um orton's working with the revival and the revival decimated the new day and their their tag match right you know it, um, it would i think it would make him more of a plucky underdog you know that whole uh, Randy Orton saying "stupid, stupid, stupid" thing. You know. Yeah, you know that's about? from yeah, that's from a SmackDown episode. That's a, that was actually real, I guess. Yeah. I was YouTubing it, and I guess Kofi fucked up on something when they were wrestling, and he was just yelling like in the ring, like just how stupid he was. Or yeah, something. he got up. He got up too soon for uh, for the setup to the RKO or something like that. For the finish, he started the finish too soon. And that was back when Randy Orton was uh, like the golden child, could do no wrong. Yeah. And I noticed something about Randy Orton about this match, about nobody else. Randy Orton talks to his opponent. Now, we all know the truth about wrestling here, so there's no reason to sit here and just play stupid. But like I know, and, and, and you know too, Ryan, you know that the wrestlers talk to each other in subtle ways. They have little lingo. So they know how to continue throughout the match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the name of our show, Call in the Ring. You know, that's what they call it. Call in the Ring. You know, um, Randy Orton, I noticed, talks to Kofi a lot. Like, I actually saw his lips moving and, and saying stuff like, okay, we're going to, okay, like, are you ready? And then Kofi, I heard him say during the match something, are you ready? And Kofi said, yeah. And then they did something. Like, I noticed Randy Orton does that. I don't know if you noticed, but really watch that match again. Kofi, ta- uh, Randy Orton talks to him a lot. Kind of took me out of the match because yeah, I noticed. I didn't notice that a whole lot. Oh, I noticed it a handful of handful of times, and it was like it. It, it kind of took me out of the fantasy because wrestling overall is a fantasy, you know. And I don't want to be, you know, I want to eat the burger. I don't want to see them kill the cow. You know what I mean? I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So, which doesn't make it bad. It's just my two cents. Uh, a match that I could give two fucking shits about. Eric Ronan defeating Roman Reigns in a notice qualifications match at 7 minutes and 25 seconds. I don't care. 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 Yeah, I don't, like, much, I, 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 I don't much care about the storyline that this is uh, wrapping up with and things like that. Um... The the match itself was uh, violent, but not like you know, entertainingly violent. I don't think um, yeah. it is cool to see uh, Luke Harper back, but if they're going to have him as a second to Eric Rowan, that's not cool. Um, the thing is though that I'm getting surprised about is Roman Reigns is getting like I I feel like he's actually getting the genuine reactions. Like the fans actually care for the character now instead of you know booing the character because they're feel like they're being forced to care about him like that's a, a nice change of pace i like roman reigns i have no problem with it. i just think this this is kind of it's boring it's boring well to go on that so first of all this is definitely a rehash of the stone cold being ran over a bit right because on raw he goes to do an interview and somebody tips over a, a scaffolding something and then you know he's in the car talking to Samoa Joe, and somebody comes and hits him with a car. I mean, clearly they have done this before a handful of times, not just with Stone Cold, but they've done this before, right? Yeah. So, so it kind of felt like a been there, done that storyline. And then the second thing is, and this is this sounds terrible, but I actually mean every word of it. The reason why the fans like him is because he because he battled leukemia in real life and he won again. That's the only reason why they like him. They hated well, him. Well, they actually, so yeah, they hated him before that. And when he, he got cheered, you know, when he made his announcement, he got cheered when he made his return. But they booked him for a while there, like, you know, nothing had changed. Like, he hadn't been gone. And it, it was going back, it was noticeably going back to the way it was before he took his sabbatical. And then after the pay per view, um, I think it was Extreme Rules, where he tagged him with The Undertaker to take on Drew McIntyre and, and Shane McMahon. Ever since then, it's been a more positive response 
every time, every like the past two or three pay per views. I think this one specifically, I've, this is the first time I really noticed like there wasn't like it wasn't like it was back, you know, right after WrestleMania. Yes, true. I you know I just that's why I think the fans have liked him more. It's just because hey, in his words, hey y'all, I battled you know leukemia, and it's like. Man, that sucks. I feel really bad for it because leukemia hits home for me personally because I have a member of my family that has battled leukemia. So I get it, but it's like, you know, this guy was hated ever since I started watching wrestling again. And it's just like, it's just interesting to me that the fans uh, cheer him. I, I, I don't like his entrance. It's too slow. I don't like his entrance music. It's just kind of douchey to me. And Eric Ronan is the biggest doucher of all. I think Eric Ronan's more douchey than Baron Corbin. I hate this guy. I mean, like, this guy is made to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to be somebody's bodyguard a la Daniel Bryan, and that's it. I mean, like, I mean, because you got Luke Harper, you had Eric Ronan, and then you had uh, Bray Wyatt, right? That was the whole Wyatt family firefly bullshit, right? Yep. So those two guys are just guys in the background. They're just the muscle. And this 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 whole thing with Ronan is just not my thing. And I don't like this no disqualification match. Not good. Yeah, it is kind of boring. It was really long too, seventeen and a half minutes for something like this. Um, I was surprised though they, based on like if we go back through Eric Rowan's history um, so far in the since twenty. 13, 2014, something like that. Um, he's not really been presented as a threat. He's just big. But they actually had him, like, he went pretty much toe to toe with Roman Reigns, which I really, like, that surprised me. Because um, I didn't think they would build Eric Rowan up to be, like, a top level, like, top card act. Uh, but that seems to be the way they're going. And that it does kind of. Good does kind of interest me but again it, the, what they've done so far I'm, I, I don't really care before we get to the last match of the night what are they doing with Daniel Bryan do you think do you think personally he's just taking a few few months off to relax or do you think they're trying to redo his character or what's going I on think, with Daniel Bryan I mean they might have I don't know because I don't I don't watch the I don't watch the um, live shows I don't watch the SmackDown or Raw anymore because I don't have cable, but um, you know, based on the recaps that they do before the matches on the pay per views, I would. Uh, my thinking is that they're probably going to just like Harper and Rowan are probably going to, you know, beat up uh, Dan O'Brien. He's probably going to take some time off, and then when he comes back, he's going to be a good guy again. Um, which you know is all right. It's fine. It's what it is. But I really enjoy. Uh, heel egotistical Daniel Bryan more than I enjoyed. Uh, I'm happy to be wrestling again, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, fickle, right? Fickle, fickle loved, yeah. Loved when he would say fickle. There's a bunch of YouTube videos of him just saying fickle repeatedly, and it's beautiful. It's what's one of the funnest things I've ever seen. Uh, last match of the night is Seth Rollins defeating Braun Strowman for the WWE Universal Championship at 11 minutes even. This match was very cookie cutter for me, but I found it absolutely enjoyable when fucking Braun Strowman jumps off the top rope and does a frog splash pretty much on Seth Rollins. I thought this match was fun. I thought he was going to fall off the ropes outside of the ring. He looked like it. It didn't look like he had his balance good. Like, wow. No, I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was, you know, it's not great, but I thought it was really fun. I was really good. They they did a good um, small man, big man uh, formula. And then Braun Strowman, you know, jumped off the top turnbuckle and did a frog splash. That was pretty fucking sweet. Um, but, yeah, I'm kind of sad that they're not ever going to push Braun Strowman as the champion. Because, um, I mean, when they do, it's not going to matter. It's not going to have any catharsis to it. Um because he's had these opportunities and he always loses these big matches and it's very sad because he's you know he's very he's very fun he's very fun to watch um he has a minimal move set but he doesn't need to know a lot of wrestling moves because he's a large monster and he can be very frightening um last year he was monster in the bank and he lost that opportunity mm -hmm. i i am kind of over seth rollins as the universal champion i don't find him interesting interesting yeah i don't like i i've never been like, I've never been behind Seth Rollins. I don't find him all that interesting as a character. 
uh, he's really good in the ring, and he, you know, he has an, like, he's a pretty decent promo, but he's not, like, I don't know. He's not interesting. I guess that's the best, like, Becky Lynch is interesting. Cove Kingston, to me, is, is still interesting. Alexa Bliss is interesting. The Revival are interesting. Uh, AJ Styles is interesting. But, like, Seth Rollins, I don't know. I'm just not, like, I don't know. I just don't find him all that interesting. He's uh, Triple H. I mean, like, I uh, know that he was uh, buddies with Triple H back when he was the architect and he had that blonde streak and he won his first title run then. Um, he was a bad guy back then. Uh, but that's who he is now. I mean, hell, he has. I mean, hell, he did the pedigree last night to Braun Strowman. So, like, I don't know. He's he's the new Triple H, man. That's just who he is. And was Triple H really ever interesting? So that's what Seth Rollins is, right? Because the only time that Triple H was ever interesting is when he married uh, Stephanie McMahon in, uh, in in Vegas, right? And after that, he was vanilla. And that's what Seth Rollins is. He's vanilla. Seth mm-hmm. Rollins is uh, Cena, right? He's just the company guy who always wins. I mean, he's not. The thing is, he's not as charismatic as John Cena. John Cena can do like he's very versatile because um, he was able to float from. Yeah, uh, from the Doctor Thugonomics gimmick to Super Cena to now Elder Statesman John Cena, and like each one is an individual phase that you can mark down because the mannerisms and the character are slightly different. Seth Rollins is no different, really, from you know good guy Roman Reigns or you know good guy uh, I don't know give me any uh, any good guy you can think of on the roster. He's not really much different from them. He just gets more airtime. Well, now, but back when he won his first title, you know. Yeah, after, he was a cackling heel. He was entertaining. Yeah, he was, and now it's different. I mean, like, I'm not over Seth Rollins yet because you know why I'm not over Seth Rollins, Ryan? Because he beat Brock Lesnar. Because Brock Lesnar's not around. That's why I hate Brock Lesnar. I have always hated Brock Lesnar. I'm happy when Brock Lesnar's not around. It's just better. The WWE is better when Brock Lesnar is not around. Because the Universal Championship only came out, what, since 2016? And it's only had like four champions. It's had Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins. Oh, five. And and Roman Reigns. Finn Balor. Finn won it for a day. So six. He's He's number one. He's the first. He's the first. But it's like, you know, when all those champions can't hold a candle to Brock Lesnar because he had it for, what, a year? Yeah, had it from uh, WrestleMania until SummerSlam the next year. I'm just sick of it. Just, uh, I'm just, I'm actually sick of the WWE Championship and I'm sick of the Universal Championship. I don't like those two. Hmm. I just don't like it. The those are the top are, titles. Those are supposed to be. Those are supposed to be the ones that draw you in. Those those wrestlers and those matches. Why can't you just do the big gold belt and be done with it? Why do they have to? Have, I mean, the Universal Championship is the WWE Championship means nothing to me like it used to. I mean, it's 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 not the WWE Championship was always the match of the night, the end of the match. And it wasn't this. Uh, the WWE Championship was uh, what was second before because then you had Roman Reigns in between, and then you had the Universal. It's like I don't know what I'm trying to say, Ryan. It's like it's it's just not intriguing to me at all. I mean, well, I the Universal title is the top title on their number one show, so it's going to be. They're always going to feel like that's the number one title to go after, so they're always going to put that on last. Um, I think they should put the WWE title, <clears throat> excuse me, on on last. I think that should always main event. Um, but also, I, I mean, I think you should go with whatever is the most interesting, whichever one is getting the bigger reactions. You know, that, that should be the main event. If Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton is getting a larger reaction than Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman on the weekly on the weekly shows, then you know which one to go with for the main event. But they don't do that. It's it's whatever the universal title match is that's gonna that's gonna go on the main event. Yeah, you're, right. you're right. Well everybody, we hope you enjoyed our review of Clash of Champions two thousand nineteen here with uh, Ryan and myself. We are coming back to you guys every month. 
for a WWE pay-per-view. Next month, we'll be coming back um, for Hell in a Cell. I'm excited to review that one. I know for, what, October, we're going to do Evolution as well, right? So we may be doing two episodes that month. I don't know if they have Evolution this year. Well, if they're doing a Saudi Arabia one, I don't know if I'll be watching that one. Oh, I don't think we should do the Saudi Arabia ones. Those aren't really impactful. like, like, Like a crown jewel super showdown. So if anything, we're coming back next month for hell in a cell if if anything that's what we're going to bring you guys so uh thank you so much for listening to this episode of course like always make sure to keep on downloading us at movieguyspodcast.podbean.com on spotify on itunes on iHeartRadio. just search for movie guys podcast we're the logo with the uh you know with the headphones in the in the bag of popcorn for movie guys podcast thank you so much everybody for listening and we'll be back next month for another wwe pay-per-view have a good night